give me repression, give me dark past. I'm in for it. And it is a little bit thriller, of course. Being able to support a Loki, Loki, local indie bookstore. This one just, I, I don't know why I'm on such like a suburban messed up people kick, but I am. If Lori Laughlin went so crazy cuckoo extreme, I think this could have been her. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be a bunch of books that are coming out in February, I'm a little bit late, that I am really, really, really excited to read. And I'll be honest, most of these authors, I think with two exceptions, are authors I've never read before. And some of them are debut novels, some of them are people that just weren't on my radar, but these stories all sound super exciting to me. And some of them are definitely on the dark and heavy side, but some of them hopefully will bring us some laughter and some joy and everything in between. So here we go, let's just talk about the books. So the first book I wanna talk about is the one that I actually pre-ordered and it is called A Bright Ray of Darkness by Ethan Hawke. And I feel like I have mentioned my love slash obsession for Ethan Hawke on this channel before, but if I haven't, here it is. I have been obsessed with him basically since Dead Poet Society. And I read his first book, I want to say like when it first came out, and I unhauled it at some point. And I honestly think I just wasn't old enough, smart enough to get it. I don't know. But this is the first book he has written in nearly 20 years, it says. And I imagine there's going to be some level of personal experience in it. But it says it is about a, a blistering story of a young man making his Broadway debut in Henry IV just as his marriage implodes. If you guys know anything about Ethan Hawke, you know he's done a lot of Broadway. He had a marriage that imploded. And obviously he has been a writer, a director, a producer, an actor uh, for all these years and has a huge, long history. But it says, a bracing meditation on fame and celebrity and the redemptive healing power of art. A portrait of the ravages of disappointment and divorce, a poignant consideration for the rights of fatherhood and manhood, a novel soaked in rage and sex, longing and despair, and a passionate love letter to the world of theater. So I just adore him to pieces. And to make things even better, there is a local-ish bookstore that had signed copies of the book as well. So I pre-ordered it. It should be shipping soon and I'm excited to read it. I just, I really love him. I feel like this is definitely not going to be a book that's for everybody, but I'm really curious to read it. Next up is The Project by Courtney Summers and I read Sadie, I want to say two years ago and I really loved it. And this book has cult vibes to it, which I'm totally down for. So this is about two sisters, their parents passed away and it sounds like one sister went to go live with her aunt and the other sister joined this cult, The Unity Project. But apparently like The Unity Project is praised for its charitable contributions and all the work that it does, but Lo, who is our main character, is super suspicious of it and has spent like the past few years looking into it because she wants to get her sister out of it. And she finds out that this one man is accusing the Unity Project of being responsible for killing his son. So I don't know the details of that, which is totally fine by me, but it sounds like it kind of gives Lo what she needs to be able to dig in to the Unity Project and expose them for perhaps the cult that they are. So. I don't know, cult vibes? Sounds interesting to me. The next book is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. And I read Far From Home by Tess Sharp a couple years ago, which was a YA thriller, but it was one of like the first YA books I had read in a long time when I was still wearing my I don't read YA hat. And I really enjoyed that book. I just got like completely pulled into it and I enjoyed her writing. So this one is, a, it says it's a YA page turner about a con artist taken hostage during a bank heist. So it's about this girl, Nora, and her mom is a con artist, and she was raised by her mom to sort of be, I guess, a con artist of her own, and she was her mom's best protege. But then her mom wound up falling for one of her marks and kind of like got out of the game. So we fast forward five years, and Nora has kind of abandoned her con artisty life as well, it sounds like. But here we go, she's got three problems, and this one I am gonna read. 
So it says, number one, her ex walked in on her with her girlfriend. Even though they've all been inseparable for months, Wes didn't know about her and Iris. Number two, the morning after, they all have to meet to deposit the fundraiser money they raised together. It's a nightmare that goes from awkward to deadly. Because number three, right after they get to the bank, two guys start robbing it but they have no idea who they're really holding hostage. So it says the robbers are trouble, nor is something else entirely. And not only do I just adore this book cover, I just am hearing really good things about it. It's mystery. It just sounds great fun. And again, I really enjoyed Tess Sharp's writing in Far From You, and it's getting really great reviews. And it just sounds great, obviously. That's why it's on the list. So the next book I have is called This Close to OK by Lisa Cross Smith. And it says that this is a vibrant, powerful story of two strangers brought together by wild chance at the moment they needed each other most. And this is told in two different perspectives. So we have Tally, who is a therapist. She's driving home one night, rainy night, of course. And she finds this man, Emmett, who is standing on a bridge and it says he's precariously on the edge. And she manages to convince him to get into the car and just have a cup of coffee with her and talk to her. So she doesn't reveal to him that she's a therapist, but she's com like committed to helping him because it's what she does and it's who she is. And it says over the course of an emotionally charged weekend that follows, they basically, she's trying to heal him, but then finds out that he's not the only one with secrets and he's not the only one who needs healing. So it sounds like they both have their issues and they both sort of work it out. I don't know if there's a happy ending to this, but it says hard truths, things that Tally's been grappling with her entire life. Um, and again, two strangers brought together. So it sounds really interesting to me. I do love a dual perspective. I find it very interesting with that sort of weekend timeline and I'm just really curious to see where this one goes as well. So it completely was not on my radar. I hadn't heard anything about it before, but I'm in. I'm totally in. So I'll be honest, you guys, there's a lot of dark books on this month's list. And the next one is called Girl A by Abigail Dean. And this one is about a young girl who escapes captivity, but not the secrets that shadow the rest of her life. And she was held captive along with her siblings by her parents in what's kind of dubbed this house of horrors. And she becomes known as Girl A, and she's the girl who escaped. And it sounds like she rescues her younger siblings as well. And I'm not quite sure what happens to her parents. It sounds like her mom dies in prison. I don't know what happened to her dad. But she is trying to deal with, obviously, the aftermath of having been held captive by her own parents. And then also the complicated relationship with her siblings. So it says, a propulsive tale of escape and survival it becomes a gripping psychological family story about the shifting alliances and betrayals of sibling relationships, about the secrets our siblings keep from themselves and each other. So I, ugh, I mean, this is like kind of uncomfortable to me in a lot of ways, but kind of intriguing to me in a lot of ways. It says it's for readers of Room and Sharp Objects. I've become super hesitant of any kind of book comparison lately because I've fed into them and have gone into books with the wrong idea. So the only thing I'm going to go into, I haven't read Room, but I know a little bit about it, but just knowing that Sharp Objects and Gillian Flynn, who I adore, is just a dark, messed up story about family. I'm going to go in with the feeling that this is going to be a dark, messed up story about family, which sounds pretty on point based on the synopsis that I just read to you guys. But this one, I'm filming this on February 2nd and it just came out today. So whew, heavy for sure. The next book I have is called The Good Neighbors and it's by Sarah Langan. And this is being pitched as a riveting and ruthless portrayal of American suburbia. And I love messed up people doing messed up things and you put them in the suburbs and I am down for that. So I was like addicted to Desperate Housewives and anything that's sort of dark and twisted in the suburbs. I'm totally, I'm there for it. I'm here for it. So this is literary noir and it says, when a sudden tragedy exposes the depths of deception and damage in a Long Island suburb, pitting neighbor against neighbor and putting one family in terrible danger. So it is Maple Street, the picture perfect town, of course. So you know something bad's gonna happen there. And we have, I guess, sort of like the new neighbors on the block who Arlo is a has-been rock star. He's got some track marks. He's always two steps behind the other dads. His wife was a former pageant queen. 
and I guess they just don't fit in with this picture perfect neighborhood. And then we have Queen Bee neighbor Rhea, who probably turns her nose up at them, I'm gonna guess. And it says she is a lonely community college professor repressing her own dark past. Give me repression, give me dark past. I'm in for it. And her daughter winds up getting sucked into a sinkhole that opens in a nearby park. And I guess it's like, what happens afterwards? But it says, um, it's one mom's word against the others in a court of public opinion that can only end in blood. So I don't know. Let me know if you guys have heard anything about this one. But yeah, bring me into the Twisted Dark Suburbs, please. Please. Next up is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. And this is like a what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas to like is the premise. But I had listened to a podcast, Shocker. And it sounds like this book is not quite as pitched, but it sounds amazing. So this book is about Grace and she is straight A's like, high achiever, all the things, life is totally planned for her. She is not the kind of person, it says, who goes to Vegas and drunkenly gets married to a woman whose name she doesn't know until that's exactly what she did. So Grace comes home from that weekend and it sounds like there's some family stuff that goes on and she winds up leaving Portland and goes to New York for the summer to spend it with the woman that she just married. So on the surface, like this, is pitched very love story-ish it sounds like and that's kind of what they talked about in the podcast I was listening to but it says it's much more of an introspective not coming of age in the sense because Grace is 28 but it's really about Grace sort of figuring herself out so it's figuring out her life figuring out who she is who she wants to be what she wants her life to be having spent all these years sort of under under the weight of her, her dad's expectations for her and maybe defying these expectations now. So I do think there's obviously some element of relationship and love story between Grace and Yuki is the woman that she marries. And I really love like the trying to find yourself and trying to figure out who you are and people making big life shifts and maybe because I'm at a point where I feel like making a really big life shift, but this story really appeals to me and it appealed to me on, on the, the guise of it being a romance. But when I heard from this podcast that there's actually so much more depth to it and so much more exploration, I guess, of grace, it appeals to me sort of twice as much. So this comes out closer to the end of the month, but it is in my shopping cart. So another book that just came out is Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. And not only am I slightly obsessed because if you guys have noticed my recent videos, I'm all about a black turtleneck and I love the cover of this book. But this is about a woman, a mom, she's a writer or trying to be a writer. And she, I guess, accidentally kind of becomes a, a hit man, a hit woman. And I think it's comedic, I'm going to guess. Her life is just complete chaos. Her book's not written. Her ex-wife fired the nanny without telling her. And this morning she had to send her four-year-old to school with her hair duct taped to her head after an incident with the scissors. So she is overheard discussing the plot of her new suspense novel with her agent over lunch. And she is mistaken for being a contract killer and she inadvertently accepts an offer to dispose of a problem husband in order to make ends meet. So it says, Finley soon discovers that crime in real life is a lot more difficult than its fictional counterpart as she becomes tangled in a real life murder investigation. I have seen this pop up in a bunch of places. There's some great plugs on the book from Kelly Garrett and Wendy Walker and Lisa Gardner and Megan Miranda. So I just, it just sounds like deliciously fun, which is basically what the description is, not to plagiarize it, but I'm going to. And I think it's also been optioned for TV if I saw that right on Instagram. And I mean, honestly, her look is so my look these days. The next book is An Isolated Mystery, which you guys know is one of my favorites. And it takes place in the Swiss Alps. So I just finished reading One by One by Ruth Ware, which is the French Alps. And you guys know last month I talked about Shiver, which is another isolated mystery, which I think is also French Alps or maybe Swiss Alps, but it's like winter in the Alps 
where bad things happen and people start to die and this is could not be more in my wheelhouse. So this one's called The Sanator Sanatorium by Sarah P Pierce? Purse? Pierce, I wanna say. And we have a retired detective maybe taking some time off from being a detective. So we all know that something bad must have happened if she's taken some time off. And her brother invites her up to the Swiss Alps to celebrate his engagement. And it sounds like the fiance Lori at some stage goes missing and there's a threatening storm and we are isolated and she's missing. And Ellen, who is our detective, has to try and find her and also, I'm gonna guess, try and stay alive. So it just sounds like great fun. It is everything I want in a story. It's all the things I love in a story. And yeah, obviously I'm gonna read it. The next book is called Muted by Tammy Charles. And it says, a ripped from the headlines novel of ambition, music, and innocence lost. And this sounds a little bit to me reminiscent of the R. Kelly story and also grown by Tiffany D. Jackson, which I just picked up a couple weeks ago, but I haven't read yet. And this is about a 17 year old girl named Denver and it says music is everything. And her and her best friend sing their way into the orbit of the biggest R&B star, biggest R&B star in the world, Sean Mercury Ellis. And it says, even the painful sacrifices and the lies the girls have to tell are all worth it until they're not. So Denver starts to realize that she's trapped inside of his world and she is struggling to hold on to her own voice and her big dream, her big dreams of music turn into a nightmare. She must make a choice, lose her big break or get broken. So it says it is inspired by true events. I don't know if in fact it is R. Kelly, but just based on what I know of that story, which I watched all of, which was horrifying. Um, it's the dark side of the music industry, the business of exploitation, how a girl's dreams can be used against her and what it takes to fight back. So this sounds really powerful. Again, dark, probably very heavy. And it says for fans of Elizabeth Acevedo and Jason Reynolds. So I'm really intrigued by this. Again, it's just getting tremendously great reviews already. And this comes out, actually, oh, I'm sorry, it came out February 2nd. So this one is actually out for grabs, um, but I, I'm really intrigued to read it. Another thriller I have on the list is Quiet in Her Bones by Nalini Singh. And I can't believe I have not read a Nalini Singh book at this point. I'm just, oh, I'm kicking myself for all the things I wanna be doing. And this is a thriller set in New Zealand, and this is another suburban, cul-de-sac, rich elite people doing messed up things. And again, everything I want in a book. So this is about this socialite named Nina who disappeared 10 years ago without a trace. And it says, everyone wrote it off as just another trophy wife tired of her wealthy husband. Because when she left, so did a quarter of a million dollars. So it says, thief, bitch, criminal. Now she's back, her bones clothed in scarlet silk. <sighs> they find her bones in the cul-de-sac. I love it, I love it, I love it. So Nina's son, heard a chilling scream that night and he's determined to uncover the ugly truth that lives between the moneyed elegance. So it sounds like her son is the one who's looking into what happened, but it says even the dead aren't allowed to break the rules in this cul-de-sac. Ugh, this comes out later this month. I'm so excited. I'm sorry to keep screaming about stuff, but I'm getting so excited about new books from new authors. So the next book is another kind of ripped from the headlines slash I think messed up people in the suburbs doing messed up things. And this is called Girls with Bright Futures by Tracy Dobmeyer and Wendy Katzman. And this says three women, three daughters, and a promise they'll each get what they deserve. So this is a college admissions story. And there are these three, sounds like uber competitive, uber successful moms, and they're all trying to get their daughters into Stanford. And their daughters are all at Seattle's Elliott Bay Academy, which is like this top tier school, it sounds like. But then Stanford alerts the school that they're only going to allow one spot for a student from EBA. So the moms are on it. And then it says, days before applications are due, one of the girls suffers a near fatal accident that isn't an accident at all. 
As the community spirals out of control, three women will have to decide what lines they're willing to cross to secure their daughter's futures and keep buried the secrets that threaten to destroy far more than just college dreams. So if Lori Laughlin went so crazy cuckoo extreme, <laughs> I think this could have been her. I don't know if it's supposed to be dark and heavy or if it's supposed to be sort of light and snarky, but it just sounded like such great fun. And I love these, you know, on this like a serious level of defending Jacob where like the lengths you will go to to protect your children. And in this one, we've got the moms that will just like do anything to get their kid into Stanford. So I'm really curious. I don't, again, I don't know if this is comedy or serious but it sounds great either way and i'm down for it so so that's gonna do it for some books that i have my eye on in february and you guys know hundreds and hundreds of books come out i feel like 100 books came out today so these are just the ones that are currently on my radar i'm sure i'll be adding more to the list as the month goes on but let me know if you have any of these on your list what you're most excited about to read this month if there's something i 100 percent missed that you think i need to add to my list because let's be honest I'm always looking for books to add to my list. But thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out today. I hope everyone's doing great and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.